It's already the middle of the year, folks, and it's time to calm down. Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Now, typically during this time, you're seeing a lot of booktubers doing the mid-year book freakout tag. It is a tag that I've enjoyed doing multiple times in the past, and it's one that I was also going to be doing this year. It is definitely a staple booktube tag. However, my lovely friend Leandra over at Leandra, the TBR Zero, you might recognize her as she was one of the hosts for Team Spooky for the amazing readathon. She actually created her own mid-year tag and this is the mid-year calm down tag So basically with her tag we are embracing the calm vibes We are not freaking out and I thought it would be a really nice change of pace to do this instead of the mid-year freak out tag I have actually already been considering kind of revamping the end of year book tag that I typically do as well I haven't officially decided whether or not I'm going to be doing that But I definitely do appreciate the twist that Leandra put on this and I would love to see a similar twist put on the end of year book tag as well We are starting this tag with thankfulness and and the question is what 2024 has given me thus far and I think that the question is aimed with like bookish things in mind but I think I'll also kind of go ahead and venture out a little bit but just in terms of the bookish world 2024 has definitely given me a growth in community not just in terms of like subscribers but people I've grown closer to in the online bookish community this has happened you know through the sprints that I try to host as regularly as humanly possible and of course that definitely happened with the amazing readathon which is definitely one of the best bookish things that I've had happen so far this year I was really grateful to be a part of it and especially grateful to be on Team Spooky with such wonderful people and such wonderful hosts like Leandra and Lexi from Books with Lexi. My cup has definitely been filled with all of these interactions because that is the reason that I'm doing this booktube channel, right? Was to build a community of like-minded people who loved books just as much as I do because in real life I'm really not surrounded by readers and the readers that I am surrounded by they're very casual, you know, casual readers who are just reading for fun and not content or goals or anything like that. Like who even are they? But yes, I've really enjoyed getting to know so many wonderful people here in the online bookish community and I hope to see that just like thrive and grow throughout the remainder of the year for sure. In terms of non-bookish things there's definitely been a lot of growth, a lot of challenge, a lot of change within my work life. Also a lot of stress and anxiety with regard to the grad program that I'm still currently a part of. I am currently finishing my fourth class for this grad program and I will jump probably right into the fifth and you know just kind of plugging along. So there's definitely a lot that goes along with being in a grad program and accelerated one at that along with working full-time creating booktube content while also trying to be a present part partner for my husband as well as my fur family and also trying to maintain my gym schedule. I do CrossFit five days a week after work and one of the best things I think that 2024 has given me so far is just a great increase in strength and endurance. I have seen a lot of changes personally at my gym in terms of the weights that I'm able to lift in terms of the other movements that I'm able to do and I'm just so thrilled. I'm so grateful for that. It's so amazing to see what my body is able to accomplish and that's also an additional community that I have built for myself. I absolutely love the gym, the people that I work out with. It is is definitely a family. I've been there for over two years at this point and I can't imagine being with anybody else in another gym in another space. So I'm just so grateful and thankful for them as well. So lots to be thankful for this year. A lot of growth, a lot of change, a lot of development, and I'm just really looking forward to seeing what the rest of 2024 can bring. Number two is relaxation, the most relaxing book. I'm going to have to think about this for a second because y'all know that I don't really read very many relaxing books. I'm all about the dark thriller, stressed out tense vibes in my books. So let me think on this for a second. All right, so as I was scrolling through all of the books that I read for 2024, it is true that I've read very, very few books that I would consider relaxing. I would say out of all the ones that could fit, they were primarily romance. So for this, I think I'm going to select Funny Story by Emily Henry. I recently read this a few weeks ago and it is definitely one of my new favorite Emily Henry's. I just really enjoyed the vibes and the characters in this story. So this follows our main character, Daphne. She is engaged to be married to a man named Peter and Peter has had a long-term best friend named Petra. And all of a sudden, Peter and Petra decide that they are in love with each other and they want to be together. So Daphne is dumped for Petra. And that means that Petra's boyfriend, Miles, has also been dumped. So Daphne and Miles actually end up moving in together. They're both alone. They're heartbroken. They need to offset the financial burden of what's just happened to them. So they end up moving in together. And when they receive an invitation to Peter and Petra's wedding, Daphne comes up with a brilliant idea to pretend that she and Miles are dating. Like they have suddenly found a connection with each other and that they have so moved on from Peter and Petra.
And it kind of goes from there as they are developing their own love story. So I just really enjoyed the premise of this. I enjoyed following their relationship. Their very natural progression from being heartbroken and jolted to being friends and partners and then to more. And I just overall had a really, really good time with the story. So I would say that this is probably the most relaxing book. Next, we have Hydration, a book that I needed. And I have to go with Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer for this one because this was truly the delight of my year. This came out of left field and totally knocked me off my feet. This is one of your recommendations and I'm still thinking about this. This is a book that gave me all of the emotions, kicking, screaming, crying, laughing, just absolute joy while reading this story. And I had no idea that it was going to give me such an experience. This is what I would classify as a cozy fantasy romance. The fantasy aspects of it are very, very blurred and vague. That's not the point of the story. The point of the story is our main character, Evangeline Sage's relationship with the villain who is this like evil overlord in this town. And he does dastardly things and everybody in the town is afraid of him. And Evangeline actually gets a job as his assistant. And as she learns more about him and his business, she really starts to fall for him. This is a book that really makes you okay with the morally gray because the dastardly things that he does, he has a very good reason for doing them. And you kind of root for him to do it. You know what I mean? And you definitely love seeing the developing relationship between the villain and Evangeline because, you know, he's this cold, brooding, badass kind of guy. But right off the bat, you know that he really is not that way. It's just the image that he projects. And he's very thrown off his game by Evangeline because she's unlike anybody that he's ever met. And he is definitely falling for her too. Nothing really romantic ever happens in this first book, but you just kind of can see the build up to it. And I'm really, 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 really excited to see where this goes in the second book. It kind of left off on a little bit of a cliffhanger, if I remember correctly. And I'm absolutely totally excited to get to the second book in this. This book is just all smiles. I love this. I adored this. It was an easy 4.5, not quite five stars, but it was definitely close to a five stars. One of the best reading experiences that I've had this year for sure. Then we have four, which is Nourishment, a book that energized me. And for this, I think I'm going to go with Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. This is another book that came out of left field and completely swept me off my feet. I am obviously very, very late to the game with this one as this book is over 10 years old at this point. It's not something that I ever thought that I would read in my lifetime. It's not something that I ever had any interest in reading in my lifetime. But then again, it was one of your recommendations. And that's really the whole point of the project of reading like my subscribers, not just to get to know y'all better, but to see if I can find some gems that I normally would not have picked up. And this is absolutely one of them. The audiobook of this was phenomenal. It was narrated by Will Wheaton. It was a fun, fast, engaging, energetic time. And I loved it. It blew me away. It was an easy five stars for me. I got done with this book and I still kept thinking about it. Like I still kept wanting to be in this world. And I'm so grateful for this. I'm so grateful that I was able to pick up this story and love it as much as I did. So this one definitely energized me. Number five is Familiarity, an author that I've returned to. And I have returned to so, so many authors this year for sure. I have definitely read more from authors that I've read in the past than I have from new to me or debut authors. Sarah J Mass is definitely one. I finished Kingdom of Ash earlier this year to finish out the Throne of Glass series. And I just recently finished A Court of Silver Flames. So I've read two of her books and I'm now completely finished with Throne of Glass and completely caught up with the Ekatar series. Freedom McFadden, I've returned to a few times. I've read The Teacher, The Housemaid's Secret, The Housemaid is Watching. And I can't remember if I read Never Lie this year. I'm not sure, but I've definitely read three of her books. I definitely have also returned to Kristen Hanna. I read The Women, which is one of my best books of the year so far. Kristen Hanna almost never steers me wrong. I absolutely love her. She's one of the most talented writers I have the pleasure of reading from. I also returned to S.A. Cosby a couple of times, completing the backlist that I needed to catch up on all of his works with Blacktop Wasteland and My Darkest Prayer, both of which I very, very much enjoyed. I also returned to Colleen Hoover a couple of times, once with Confess and once with It Starts With Us. She's one of my favorite contemporary fiction authors, so it is no wonder that I've returned to her. I will probably return to her every year until like her backlist is completed or done. And of course, I also recently just read One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware, which was her newest release. And I think I've read now everything that she has written up until this point. So she is definitely a favorite of mine. So I have returned to some of my favorite authors of all time this year, and I am certainly not mad about it. Question number six is healthy risk. And that is outside of my comfort zone slash a new to me author. And honestly, both Ready Player One and Assistant to the Villain would work for this because these two books were not on my radar at all. I never, ever, ever would have picked them up had it not been for my Read Like My Subscribers challenge. In fact, I feel like that challenge has done nothing but push me outside of my comfort zone. There have been very few books as part of this project that I have read that I normally would have picked up on my own or that I had any interest in reading for sure. So these two, but if I had to provide a different answer to this question, I would say one that sticks out to me is Evocation by S.T. Gibson. I have heard a lot about S.T. Gibson. A lot of people really enjoyed A Dowry of Blood. I've heard almost nothing but amazing things about S.T. Gibson. And when this came in my fairy loot, I was intrigued by the premise of it. Now I'm still a little bit conflicted over my reading experience with it just because it was very different from anything I'd read before. It was different than what I was even expecting going into it. And what really propelled me through it was the relationship dynamics in here. There was definitely kind of like a polyamorous thing going on here. It was very complicated 
complicated relationship and I just felt the love that these characters had for each other and it was like one of the first books that ever really made me start to understand a polyamorous relationship so I kind of appreciated what S.T. Gibson was able to do with this story and I think I would be willing to read more from her in the future. I think my confusion over my feelings on this really just more stems from the overall plot and my confusion about what was happening with the plot not necessarily with the characters so I'm gonna say this one because I do feel like this is outside my comfort zone. I don't necessarily know if this is one that I would have picked up if A it hadn't been sent to me in Fairy Loo and B if I hadn't heard so many amazing things about S.T. Gibson from the online bookish community. So this one. Seven. Reflections. Changes in my reading taste. My reading has definitely undergone some serious transitions over the past couple of years. The main one, one that I have talked about multiple times on my channel so far, is that I have moved completely away from young adult novels. At first it was just like young adult contemporary things like that and now it's almost a complete absence of young adult. It's almost like if I hear that it's young adult I instantly click off. I have no interest in it whatsoever. I've also really started to hone what my reading taste is in terms of romance because while I do love romance in general the idea of romance I need very very specific things in a romance for it to work for me. Very few romances that I read get a five stars and there are only select authors that I've been able to return to over and over again to consistently get a four four point five five star experience like Emily Henry like Abby Jimenez like Colleen Hoover. A lot of other romances are just a really big dud for me because they do a lot of things wrong. They do a lot of things that I really really can't stand. So I've really started to accept that about myself that I'm not a rom-com reader. I really need my romances to be very very harder hitting and I really need there to be a very slow burn, a lot of sexual tension. I really cannot have insta love, insta lust of any kind going on. I don't even really want these characters to acknowledge a serious attraction to each other until we're like 25% or halfway through the book. You know what I mean? I need slow 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 burn. I've also been really taking the time to be very selective about the fantasies that I put on my TBR just because I can only read a handful of them a year just because of how I read them. I need to read them immersively. It's really the only way that I'm able to fully absorb the fantasies that I'm reading and so in that regard I'm being very careful, very selective. I'm almost bringing no fantasies into my home unless I'm 100% sure that I know that I want to read them and I'm also being very selective about what series I continue and that's just to keep me from DNFing series like I have been recently like with the Aaron Falk series by Jane Harper or with the Savage Land series by Stacey Marie Brown. Like these were series that I went into and they're like, okay, yeah, this is fun. This is a good time. And then I continued with it and have never really been like super crazy impressed with the books overall. And now I'm just DNFing it just so I don't have to continue with it. And I don't want to do that. I want the series that I'm in the middle of to be very manageable and to be full of books that I'm very, very excited about reading. So that's already happened this year a few times where I've read the first book in a series and I'm just like, you know what? I really don't need to continue with this. I really don't care enough to continue with this. Like the first book was a good enough time but I don't care enough to continue with it. So overall I would say mindfulness and intention. I've talked about this on my channel multiple times but I've definitely been very mindful and intentional about the books that I bring into my home and about reading those books as they come into my home. TBR has dwindled significantly since the start of this year. I think I started this year with over 70 books on my TBR and now it's in the 20s. That's how very mindful and intentional I've been about what I bring into my home and reading them as they come into my home. So that's very very important to me as well. So overall I'm just trying to be a very mindful and intentional reader. So I actually kind kind of just already answered this with detox, a book slash habit I'm leaving behind. I have already left impulse book shopping behind. I did a whole video about book buying habits that I will try to remember to leave linked down below. But to me, a book that is brought into my home is now automatically added to my to-do list. It doesn't matter how long it takes me to get to that book, but having it on my shelves means I want to read it. it. means it's now on my TBR, which means it's now on my to-do list and it's taking up mental space no matter how small. There's a lot of decisions that go into bringing a book into my home and I just do not have the mental capacity for that anymore. So I would much rather take the time to only buy books that I haven't read when I'm ready to read them, but that they're just not sitting there and potentially gathering dust and me losing interest in the books. You know what I mean? Because I think it's just human nature that we're all going to be distracted by the shiny things. No matter how much we say we want to read the books that are already on our shelves, whenever something new comes out and we have the opportunity to read it, I think we're always going to gravitate towards that. And so that's why I've really, really been focused on also bringing down my backlist because the longer those books are on my TBR, those backlist books are there. I'm not going to want to read them or I'm going to lose interest in them. So I'm trying to get to a point where I feel more comfortable maybe focusing more on those shiny things just because I know it's always going to happen and I'm always going to be distracted by them. So overall I'm leaving behind mindless, impulsive, unsustainable book shopping habits for sure. In terms of books I do a small unhaul every single month in my reading roundups so you're welcome to go ahead and check some of those out to see all of the books that I've unhauled this year but those are definitely all books that I have left behind for the year. Next is positivity and this is an anticipated book slash event and I think I'm going to go ahead and use an event for this one and talk about my Slayer Fest readathon that is going to be announced at some point in August if everything
everything goes according to plan. The plan is to have it run from September 1st through September 30th. If you are new to my channel, every year I host a Buffy themed readathon called Slayer Fest. You don't need to know anything about Buffy the Vampire Slayer in order to participate. I will say that this round is going to be very, very different from any of the other rounds that I've hosted. This round is going to be primarily focused on season one of Buffy. And so there will be some spoilers for season one in this readathon, but you can avoid them if you want to. Or my personal opinion is you should go and watch season one of Buffy, which is only 12 episodes and you will have plenty of time to do that between now and when my readathon starts. But yes, I'm very much looking forward to it. I have spent a lot of time making some changes to it to make it more dynamic and in all honesty, to make it more challenging, but not super complicated to where it's overwhelming, if that makes sense. So all of those details are going to be coming out in August. I hope to see a lot of you there. It is going to be a team-based competitive readathon this time. So I hope that you come, I hope that you enjoy, and I hope that you have a great time. And then 10 is looking ahead, personal plans and goals. So in terms of personal plans and goals with this channel, my plan is to continue making two videos a week as long as I can sustain that. My plan is definitely to grow this channel and grow this community. I just want to continue making quality content for booktube. I want to be sure that I'm making content that I would enjoy watching myself. You know what I mean? And I want to make sure that it's content that you want to be seeing as well. So of course, you are always welcome to leave down below any video suggestions that you have for me. I'm always willing to take feedback. I want to continue running sprints every so often. I can't do them as often as I would like just because of grad school that takes up a lot of my time and attention and energy. And since I can only really run sprints on the weekends, you know, sometimes we're busy on the weekends doing other things and I can't, but I do want to hold sprints at least once or twice a month on my channel and just continue with that engagement. I feel like sprints are one of the best ways that I can engage with y'all on a regular basis. So essentially my personal goals and plans are just to be consistent on book two, grow this community, interact with y'all more, and just continue to make the content that I want to make that I would want to watch and that I hope y'all want to watch as well. I feel like I rambled quite a bit in this video, but I still hope that you enjoyed. Please comment down below and let me know a book or book habit that you are leaving behind for 2024. I would love to know. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you were not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you were here, go ahead and leave me an emoji of your choice that maybe represents your year so far. Maybe something great that has happened to you. Maybe a heart for love, maybe a family for some family time, maybe books for all the books that you've been buying, whatever you want to leave me to express a little bit about how your year is going so far. I would love to see. And once again, a big thank you to Leandra for creating this tag and for allowing me to do it. I will be sure to leave Leandra's channel and the original video down below for you to check out. You absolutely must. She's absolutely wonderful. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays. I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books I talked about in this video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.